This is part five in our series of lectures on section 4.5. And uh, it's similar to the previous lecture uh, where we dealt with some general results about in, uh, inverse images with respect to unions and intersections. And in this one, we're going to talk about images rather than inverse images. So here's the main result. And you'll notice it's not quite as nice a result as the one that we proved in the previous lecture. Once again, we have a function from A to B, but this time, instead of giving ourselves a, a bunch of subsets of B, we give ourselves a bunch of subsets of the domain A. So E sub N, such that N varies over the natural numbers, is a collection of subsets of A indexed by N. Then the following are true. First of all, it says that um, the image of the union is the union of the images. So that's just like the... Um, previous result, it's te it tells you essentially that taking an image of a bunch of sets commutes with the operation of taking a union of a bunch of sets. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. So that's a nice result. This is the one that isn't so nice. It says that if you take the image of a intersection of sets, that that's contained in the intersection of all of the sets. And it's quite possible that the left-hand side is really a proper subset of the right-hand side. In other words, there exists um, a choice of f and um, sets e sub n such that this is really not a subset of this. But if f happens to be one-to-one, -one, then these two things are equal. Okay, so it's not quite as, it's a little more fussy result than the one for inverse images where you don't have to worry. You always know you have equality with inverse images, but for forward images, you have to um, worry in the case that you're taking forward image of intersections. But as I mentioned with the previous lecture, these results are very well worth remembering, and they're results that you'll make use of in future courses, in more advanced courses. So remember the statement of these results. Uh, the other point that I want to make is that it really doesn't matter in the theorem what the indexing set for your family of sets is. So this could be just two sets, this could be uncountably many sets, but the analogous result is still going to be the is still going to be true. Now I'm only going to prove the first part, part A, for you, and I'm going to leave B and all of these other things uh, as an exercise for you to do, and that'll be something that we possibly visit in future um, exercises. So let's have a look at the relevant working definitions that we'll need in order to prove this. Okay, we need to recall what is the meaning of the image of a subset of the domain. So the image f of e is the set of all y in the codomain such that there exists an x in that set e such that y is equal to that f of x. It's the image of some element of e. And this is the working definition of the union of a bunch of sets. It's the set of all z such that there exists an index m such that z is in z sub m. In other words, the union is the set of all things that lie in at least one of those sets, z sub n. Okay, so now we're going to write the proof. And um, we're going to do it the usual way. We're going to use working definitions to show that this is a subset of this and this is a subset of this. So why don't you put your video on, pause, see if you can write the proof that this is a subset of this. Okay, so I begin by, if you just look at the structure, you see I begin by taking a y in the left-hand side, and I ultimately show that it's in the right side. So here are the details. If y is an element of the image of this, then there must exist an x in here, there exists x in the union such that y is equal to f of x. It's f of something in this set. But to say that x lies in the union is to say that it lies in at least one of them. So that means there exists an index m such that x is in e sub m. And since x is in e sub m and y is f of x, that means that y is in the image of e sub m. And if y is in the image, it is in this particular set, then it must be in the union of all such sets, because it's in at least one of them. And therefore, I've proven that 
this is a subset of this. Now see if you can prove the reverse inclusion that this is a subset of this. So we begin by taking a y in the right hand side. So now we see that it's in the union and therefore it must be in at least one of these sets. So that means there exists an index m such that y is in the mth one of those sets. But to say that y is in the image of e sub m is to say that there exists an x in e sub m such that y is equal to that f of x. But if x is in e sub m, then it must be in the union of all of the e's, because it's in at least one of them, and y is f of such a thing, and therefore y must be in the image of the union. And that proves that this thing is a subset of this thing. In other words, the right-hand side is a subset of the left-hand side. And so we have both inclusions, and therefore we've proven the theorem. I'm going to leave the proof of, I guess I, I wrote part a, a, but I should have said part B of the theorem involving intersections as an exercise. So there are really two things for you to do. Prove that the left-hand side is a subset of the right-hand side, and also prove that you can come up with an example of an F for which the left-hand side is a proper subset of the right-hand side. And finally, try to prove that if F is actually one-to-one, -one, that the right-hand side is a subset of the left-hand side. So there's quite a bit left to do. It's a good exercise, and uh, I think we'll revisit that a little bit later in the class.